Welcome to another video in the Learn to Excel series brought to you by Chemical Engineering Life. In this video, we are going to have a look at how you can calculate average in Excel. We will try to calculate average using two different methods. The first one being that you can use the definition of the average and use a combination of two different formulas, or you can use an inbuilt function in Excel. Either way, you'll see that you get the exact same answer, and then there are two different methods of doing it. And then whichever that you prefer in the future, you can then continue to do so. But before we begin, just a quick recap or a quick overview about what an actual average is and how it is normally calculated is that you can see the formula on the screen right here. So the average is basically calculated as the sum of the data divided by the total number of data points that you have in the given range. So that means that if I have 10 data points, I calculate the sum of all 10 of them divided by 10. Or if I have 20 data sets, then 20, if 20 of the sum up the all 20 of them and then divide that by 20 and so on and so on. So already now you should have an idea that our the numerator of an average is our numerator, whereas the count is then the denominator. And if you are in doubt about what the sum and the count function are in Excel, then do remember to check out our other video where we had a look at the, how to use the sum functions and the count functions. But so first we'll do is that we calculate the sum of our data that we have on the left. Then you get the sum, which is like I said, the numerator, because we are adding up all of the data sets. And then we use a count function. Uh, and then we count all of the, num the numericals that we have in our data. There you go. And then if you like to calculate the average, then it's basically just the sum divided by the count. And that means that the average is 41. And we'll also do so right here. So we'll equal that cell to, oops, sorry. So we will equal that to that cell. There you go. So that's one way you can calculate the average using the actual definition of average. So you use the combination of the sum and the count function, you divide it together and you get the average. But still, that's still a very long way of doing things, right? Because you have to do it, because you have to do that in three different steps. You first have to calculate the sum, then you have to calculate the count, and then you need to divide that together. Excel has made your life a lot easier because they have an inbuilt function called average, and you can use that average to calculate the average of your data set. There you go. And that essentially is, and that is literally called the average function. So you just write is equal to average and then you select your data and that's how you can calculate. And the output that you get is then your average of your data points. And you see that luckily they match. That means that either way, whatever method you choose, you end up getting the right answer. But there are a few things that you need to be aware of. Firstly, if you look into the data set right here, if I get rid of these two data points, the zero points, a mistake that a lot of people make is that they many times assume that Excel takes that as an input and, and assumes that to be zero, but that is sadly not the case. Because what you'll see on the right hand side is that the Excel is now calculating the sum and it's only counting eight variables. It's not counting these two variables or these two cells. Because if there is a blank in the average formula, then Excel will not assume that to be part of your actual data. That means that Excel does not automatically assume that to be zero. But rather, if you have that data set as zero, then you have to manually go in and write a zero. And you'll see that there's a huge difference, right? That because if I delete the zeros, then our average is a lot higher. But if I write a zero, then my average is a lot lower, of course, because then you have introduced an outlier. And that, is a, and that is sadly a common mistake when people are trying to figure out the average formula and they assume that, it, that if they leave something blank, Excel will take that as a zero, but that's not the case. You have to manually go in and write a zero for Excel to take that in as zero as an input. And the way we can see that is that if I delete it, then you'll see that it, the count function is only calculating eight and the average matches with each other. On the other hand, if we do not, if I write a zero, then it's 10 and the average matches once again. So 
So that is essentially is how you can use the average function. Now, whether you use the actual formula, use a combination of the sum or the count, or you use the actual average function is completely uh, your choice. Uh, normally, the rule of thumb is that if you do not have the sum calculated beforehand, then it's a good idea to simply just use the average function directly. For example, if you're trying to make the normal distribution of your data set, then most of the time people will directly use the average function because it makes your life a lot easier. Or if you're doing any sort of st statistical analysis and you need to use the average value in different formulas, then it's also a lot easier to just directly use the average uh, as a function. And you can even use that as part of another formula Then you don't have to do so many calculations in different cells. On the other hand side, if you would like to know how many variables that you have, how many inputs or data points that you have in your data, and you would like to also know the sum, if you would like to use the sum for a different formula or a different function, then it's also a good idea to have the sum and the count calculated in a different uh, in a different cell, and then you can use that to calculate the average. Normally, what I suggest and what I normally do is that I use both. You have to remember that the average function is foolproof. And you can be rest assured that this formula does not make any mistake and the average that you get by using the average function is the most correct one. So even if you're using a formula, it doesn't hurt to check by using the average function if you have not made a mistake with your formula or not. For example, many times people forget to add the uh, sum. For example, they forget to, to put the entire data in the range and then you end up getting a very different average value if you're using the formula. But rather, if you're using the average function, then the sum and the count are automatically calculated for the given range that you provide. So that is the only uh, benefits and disadvantages of using the two different methods. Well, thank you for watching. And if you would like to learn more about Excel, then visit the website of Chemical Engineering Life at www.chemicallife.com, where you can sign up for online Excel courses ranging everything from basics to the advanced knowledge, which can help you further Excel in your career. And also don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Chemical Engineering Life for more videos. Thank you and have a great day.